Hello, friends. This here's a comic thread detailing the 14 common features of fascism. Information you may need for... No reason at all. There's a link to the original essay, Earth Fascism, by Umberto Eco in this tweet if you need to brush up on the source material. With all that said, please enjoy these funny ha-ha word pictures. And now, Umberto Eco's 14 common features of fascism. Number one, the cult of tradition. There can be no advancement of learning. Truth has been already spelled out once and for all, and we can only keep interpreting its obscure message. Political correctness has ruined our way of life. We need to return to the days of Western Christian values. When was that? You know, when black people couldn't vote and stuff. Oh. Number two, the rejection of modernism. The Enlightenment, the Age of Reason, is seen as the beginning of modern depravity. In the sense, her fascism can be defined as irrationalism. When we used religion as a baseline for government, the world was better. Please don't read any history books! Number three, the cult of action for action's sake. Action being beautiful in itself, it must be taken before or without any previous reflection. Thinking is a form of emasculation. If I hear that any of these liberal university cultural Marxists trying to teach my kids to hate white men, I'm grabbing my gun and blowing them away. That seems reasonable. Number four, disagreement is treason. No syncretistic faith can withstand analytical criticism. The critical spirit makes distinctions, and to distinguish is a sign of modernism. With all the history and evidence, it's easy to see that the policing institutions we have now are not working in our favor. Okay, three, two, one! Number five, fear of difference. The first appeal of a fascist or prematurely fascist movement is an appeal against the intruders. This er uh, fascism is racist by definition. As a business owner, I've seen these Muslim immigrants steal good paying jobs from honest, hardworking citizens. But aren't you the guys that hire them? Shut up! Number six, appeal to a social frustration. One of the most typical features of the historical fascism was the appeal to a frustrated middle class. A class suffering from an economic crisis or feelings of a political humiliation and a frightening by the pressure of lower social groups. I know that as your big millionaire government boy, I hold all the institutional and systemic power necessary to help you all through these difficult times. But uh, the reason we can't is, uh, black people. Go get it. Number seven, the obsession with a plot. The followers must feel besieged. The easiest way to solve the plot is the appeal to xenophobia. Patriotic citizens know that every single immigrant is actively planning the downfall of this country. Wow, that does sound very true. And once they destroy the economy and government, they'll live like kings. It all makes perfect sense. Number eight, the enemy is both strong and weak. By a continuous shifting of rhetorical focus, the enemies are both at the same time too strong and too weak. Help! It's the Red Pilled Super Chat here to crush my puny SJW body with race realism! Help! The SJWs are here to destroy Western society and turn my kids into trans Marxists! Number nine, pacifism is trafficking with the enemy. For Ur fascism, there is no struggle for life, but rather, life is lived for struggle. Life is permanent warfare. Once we destroy these people, we'll finally have our utopia. 
Well, now that I think about it, people with glasses always seem shifty to me, too. Number 10. Contempt for the weak. Elitism is a typical aspect of any reactionary ideology. The leader knows that his force is based upon the weakness of the masses. They are so weak as to need and deserve a ruler. Because the mainstream media glorifies these degenerates, people with traditional values like you are left weak, pathetic, and depressed. Well, not me. And if you give me money, I promise to tell you all the things you want to hear. That'll fix it. Number 11. Everybody is educated to become a hero. In Ur-Fascist ideology, heroism is the norm. This cult of heroism is strictly linked with the cult of death. He lived his life as a shy, quiet boy who had trouble socializing with women, which our community has agreed is a personal failure and labeled him a worthless loser with no prospects. But then he died taking out this frustration on innocent people and not us, which made him very cool and important. Write this down. Number 12. Machismo is weaponry. Machismo implies both disdain for women and intolerance and condemnation of non-standard sexual habits, from chastity to homosexuality. If you want a straight cis male having constant sex with straight cis women, then you can't even call yourself human! I'm very normal! Obviously. Number 13. Selective populism. The people is conceived as a quality, a monolithic entity expressing the common will. Since no large quantity of human beings can have a common will, the leader pretends to be their interpreter. Out on the town, having the time of my life with the silent majority. They're all just out of frame, agreeing with me. Number 14. Uh, fascism speaks new speak. All the Nazi or fascist school books made use of an impoverished vocabulary and an elementary syntax in order to limit the instruments for complex and critical reasoning. Why should I listen to a soy boy, beta, cuck, simp, normie, low energy, globalist, feminazi, cultural Marxist, libtard, SJW, safe space loving snowflake, NPC, tumbarina, purple haired, blue pilled, crybaby, PC, anti white, cosmopolitan, virtue signaling, autistic, free speed hating, Jake. Wow! What a fun topic for some comics! But it's important to know the common traits of fascism in order to call it out. Being too unsure to ever use it lets fascists get away unchallenged. But overuse can trivialize the word and make others not take the claim seriously. And as a badly drawn cartoon cat, I refuse to not be taken seriously. Thank <laughs> you.